Good morning. Welcome to our time together as we worship God together. And look, we're only online this morning. Nobody here in the building, but it might be on the internet, but we can still be in the spirit and we can still worship God together. And the beauty of being at home is that we can sing. So I hope uh, that we're all singing either quietly or belting it out so our neighbours can hear us next door. But we can sing along as we worship God together. One piece of, of news before we read uh, God's word. I'm going to read a, a lovely Christmas passage in the book of Micah and then we light our next Advent calendar. The one piece of news is that on December the 20th we're going to join together and celebrate Christmas. I hesitate to call it a carol service because we won't be able to sing the carols together but we, all, we will be able to hear them. We will be able to hear the Christmas story read to us and hear God's word open to us and in this Christmas, where maybe we're tempted to be a bit depressed, tempted to think Christmas is not the same. Um, it's, it's Christmas this year, it's going to be a very cold Christmas, and, and maybe in a lot of ways it is. But more than ever, we need to be reminded about the hope that Christmas speaks of, of the Son of God, the light of the world, coming into our dark uh, and our, our sinful world and bringing us hope, and how our world needs to hear about hope. So yourself, or maybe you can invite a friend or bring someone along who maybe this year uh, more than ever would be open to hearing about the message of the hope of Christmas. That's going to happen on December the 20th. Uh, we're going to have two services, 10.30 and 4 p.m. So you won't, doesn't matter what your surname is, you can come along to, to either of those, but you will need to, to sign up as we have been the past uh, few months. So Christmas celebration on December the 20th, 10.30 and 4 let me read now from the book of Micah. This passage which speaks of the, the birth of Jesus predicts that the Messiah will be born in the city of David in Bethlehem. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who, is, she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. I'm going to pray now. I'm going to pray that the words of Micah 5 would ring true in your hearts this morning. That wherever you are, however you're feeling, that you would be conscious of the peace of God. That Jesus is our good shepherd. That even if it's just you and your family in the house, or maybe just you by yourself in the house, that you would be conscious that he is with you. That he is standing beside you as your good shepherd. And he is giving you peace. So let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are good. We thank you that you stand uh, with us by your spirit. You draw near to us as we draw near to you. And we pray that you would be glorified in our hearts this morning as we rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the great saviour we have. We thank you that he is patient and he is kind and he is loving to us. And thank you that he is gentle and lowly in heart. So Lord, we pray that we would just be conscious that you are standing beside us. You are with us and you are for us. I want to pray for anybody watching now who maybe doesn't know you, has never um, asked Jesus to, to take away their sin, to be their Lord and their Saviour. We pray for them, Lord, that you would speak to them this morning. And for each of us, God, that you just would be glorified in our hearts this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We will see. 
Morning Junior Church. Can you believe it's only three weeks till Christmas? In my school, we have made a virtual advent calendar so every day the children can go onto the website and click on the date and watch a song or a story or something really Christmassy done by some of the staff or some of the people in the school, some of the kids or some of the staff that they'll recognise. It's really lovely to watch it um, and it makes us feel really Christmassy. Today we're going to actually go even further, more than three weeks back from Christmas. We're going to think about the first Christmas, but we're going to think about when it all started, which was months before Christmas Day. We're going to think about Mary. Mary was an ordinary young woman. She still lived at home with her mum and dad. Um, so she probably helped her mum looking after the house. She maybe looked after some of her younger siblings. Um, but you know what? She had met the man that she was going to marry. And I'm sure that that was quite exciting for her. I'm sure she maybe spent some of her time when she was cleaning thinking about her wedding dress. Or thinking about what kids she and Joseph might have. I'm sure she just had a lovely time thinking about it sometimes. But then one day, something really unexpected happened. Very suddenly, an angel appeared. Goodness, this was now. Like, sometimes when we read in Bible stories about an angel appearing, we sort of think, yeah, okay, so another angel. We think it's me. You know, maybe not a big deal. Maybe a bit like an Amazon delivery or something. But actually, it was really, really, it was really unusual. It was absolutely shocking and really a bit scary. But this angel, this angel was called Gabriel. And this angel knew exactly how Mary might be feeling. The angel said, you're truly blessed. The Lord is pleased with you. And it, Mary was a little bit afraid. She didn't know what was going on. She didn't, it was all so strange. So the, the angel carried on. Don't be afraid, he said. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with her. Truly blessed. God was pleased with her. What do it all mean? Have you ever heard somebody say, ah, just the person I'm looking for? Or would you do me a favour? Could you do something for me? When I hear those things, I'm always a little bit cautious. I don't know what's coming. Um, I anticipate something interesting, but I'm a little bit unsure. Uh, it could be just a little job, or sometimes it could be something really life-changing. Well, I think... When Mary heard these words coming from an angel, I think without a doubt, she probably realised her life was going to change. Next word was confirmed it. He said, you will have a son. His name will be Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of God most high. The Lord God will make him king as his ancestor David was. He will rule the people of Israel forever and his kingdom will never end. Wow, imagine that. Mary and Joseph lived in a little town called Nazareth. It wasn't anything important. It wasn't a time people expected big things of. Really, no, nothing really exciting ever happened in Nazareth. Nobody really famous had come from there. And yet, they were going to have a son. Mary was going to have a son who was a king. And not just a king, but the son of God most high. But you know, Mary trusted God. Mary knew, well, his first words to me were important. He told me that God was pleased with me. And so God has trusted me with this really huge task of raising his son. And so I'm going to trust him. And God will give me the strength to do what he's asked me to do. Um, but you know, Mary accepted that. Mary realised that. But she still wanted to know lots more about it. So she asked the angel questions. And the angel gave her answers but you know what that kind of tells me that even with the answers it was still going to be a really hard thing for Mary to do and sometimes we don't get easy answers sometimes yes it's good to ask the questions but the answers won't always be easy. I love starting to say I think about Mary you know because it always reminds me that when we trust God and when we want to make our choices 
uh, to please God, that God will give us his strength, God will help us. Um, it might not always be easy, sometimes it can be really tough. A lot of times over the last few months things have been tough, but God gives us the strength to keep going. Uh, and also, sometimes over the last few months, there have been a lot of questions we've needed to ask. And even asking questions of God, like why things are happening right now. And God loves us asking questions. God will answer us. The answers might not be easy, but they'll come. My marriage was had a very different future to plan for, but they knew that if they trusted God, that he would give them all the strength they needed to get through it. They had no idea, they couldn't have had any idea what was in store, but they trusted God to be with them. Thank you for coming to Junior Church today, and Merry Christmas. Good morning, and I trust you are all well. We want to share with you this morning some details on the Dignity Project, which works in Southeast Asia, and which we have ensured as a church have supported for the past two Christmases. To date, due to your generosity, we've been able to fund the training, the purchase of the sewing machine, and enough materials to set a young girl up in business. And we've been able to do that for 149 girls. And as, as you read some of these girls' stories, which Ansel will share with you later, you will see that it doesn't just impact on that one girl. Quite often that young girl goes back to be the main provider for her mum and dad and brothers and sisters in, in her home. So that 149 lives that we have helped could actually, actually turn out to be near to a thousand people. The Dignity Project works in Southeast Asia and statistics produced by Asia Link states that 3 billion of people in the world who remain unreached who have not heard the amazing good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So 75% of those people, so 3 out of every 4 of that 3 billion, live in Asia. The Dignity Project helps young girls aged 12 and upwards who are vulnerable to people trafficking. The young girls are targeted by cruel, evil people in the big cities in Asia and they target the young girls who are poor with offers of really good jobs and training. And then they take the young girls down to the city. And once the young girls are there, they're immediately fed hard drugs. And if they become addicted to the drugs, then they're forced to work to feed that addiction. Terry and Anne are just going to share a little bit of their um, view on this and we'll just how it captured their hearts whenever we were there. Uh, yeah, so I just really want to thank you for your previous donations um, and say that what an impact that has made, all those sewing machines that went to the girls previously. Um, and just to reiterate that 100% of all, all contributions go directly to the girls and that each sewing machine make, really makes a difference in those girls' lives. And it's so amazing to see the photos come back and to see the skills and lives change spiritually for God. And here are a few of the girls' stories. I'm 15 years old and my family are poor rice farmers. It's really hard work under the sun or in the fields when it's raining. I live in a small village, eight hours away by bus, and I'm so happy to be allowed to come here and be taught to make jewellery and sew. In the past, my family were all Christians, but now just I follow Jesus because my uncle stopped my parents, brother and sister following Jesus. Being able to come here and learn all these new skills means I can stay in the village as going to the big cities is very dangerous for girls like me from a small village. I love worship each morning and learn about Jesus from the Bible so I can be a strong Christian in my village and support my family. Thank you so much for helping me. I am 20 years of age. My family live in the mountains. We try to grow rice in the steep hillsides as we have no flat fields. My family are very poor with 10 people. I really like studying, sewing and jewellery making so I can make money for my family as many girls in my area go to the cities and have trouble there. You know I've shared my heart with you before about this and I think maybe just as a father of two beautiful young girls and it really just struck through to me whenever Gordon came and spoke about these vulnerable young girls being um, trafficked. And I think because uh, we seen them in the villages ourselves, the young girls just innocently uh, living in the villages 
And then the very next day, whenever we moved to one of the big cities, we seen the same innocent young girls now standing on the street corners, uh, being used and abused. And I think many of us resolved, and I resolved that I cannot see this and do nothing. And I suppose some of the same, well, not famous quote came to mind, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men and women to do nothing. And um, I was reading recently in Romans chapter 12, verses 9, and it, tell, it states there, and again, it's just really um, burned into my heart, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong and stand on the side of the good. We are people who carry the hope of the gospel in our hearts and that hope should drive us to be people of justice. Our God is a God of justice and he wants us to be people of justice, people of mercy, people of compassion. Jesus puts this so much better than I can ever put into words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul and strength and love your neighbour as yourself. We have it in our power to be liberators, to be life givers, to be channels of hope. Statistics, again, produced by Asia Link, tell us that today our service has started at 10.30. By the time it finishes at approximately 11.30, in that one hour, around the world today, 72 people will have been sold into slavery. We have to act. We cannot let this happen. We have it within our power to make a difference in each one of these girls' lives. As a church, you've really captured the vision that we have for this. I just want to thank you for the trust that you've put in us, um, for backing us in this and backing these girls. I really, really appreciate it. You're probably like me and you wonder at this time of the year what you're going to buy somebody that has everything. All of us have so much stuff. And I think this year has really highlighted to us just what, th what things are important in life. Um, so this year I'm going to solve all your Christmas shopping problems, which you can't go to the shops. And you have to do it online and it may not be delivered by Amazon in time, but we will get it to you in time. So why not buy a Christmas gift card? And basically what you're doing is you're, you're going to spend £100 will, will buy a sewing machine for one of these young girls. You then give this gift card to a friend or a family member, which basically says this Christmas, the gift that I bought to you is life-changing. So all I need to do, if you want to get involved and do this, and I thank you, everybody's been involved so far for the last couple of years. If you can text me, and hopefully with Aaron's amazing technology, you'll be able to my mobile phone will appear on the screen at some stage. If you can text me on my number and let me know you'd like to be involved, I will text you back the church bank account details, which you can pay the money in online. I hopefully I will have your home address. I will post a card or cards to you. If you can't, if maybe £100 is too much, if you want to just text to me that you want to buy pay for half a sewing machine or a quarter of a sewing machine, that's fine. Because I'm sure between all of us we'll be able to match up enough people to, to be able to fund uh, the sewing, for the sewing machine for a girl. So uh, that's how it's going to operate. And, um, and if you didn't want any more details, get in touch with Terry or Alex and I would be happy to just give you some more details about this really exciting, life-changing opportunity. Good morning. Hopefully you're all doing well this morning. So just before we come to pray, I thought I would share what, according to the YouVersion Bible app, has been the first which has resonated across the world the most over the course of this year. So in Isaiah 41 it says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. I'd say it's pretty obvious why that verse has struck a chord with so many people over this year. Amongst the turbulent times, the changing rules, regulations, these are words which ring so true and prove to be such comfort to us during these times. It is such comfort to God, the creator of the entire universe. He is telling us to not be afraid. Amongst everything that is going on, God is telling us that he is there for each one of us. Tells us that he will help us, he will strengthen us. 
through all that we go through, all the good times, all the bad times. So this, we don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be discouraged. So let's just take some time to come to this great golden prayer. Father, just thank you for that. Uh, these verses just ring so true for us. Thank you that we do not have to be afraid, we do not have to be discouraged amongst these changing times. Thank you that you are in control of everything, and that you have promised that you will strengthen us, help us through all that we are going through. We just thank you that in this time that we have these facilities to continue to meet despite the restrictions which have been imposed upon us. We just thank you that we can use this online hemisphere to just meet together in fellowship and also to and to reach others who uh, normally wouldn't step into the church building. And we just pray that um, as the new regulations come in that we'll hopefully be able to meet again in person in the upcoming weeks before Christmas. And over the course of this week, Lord, we just thank you for this news of the vaccine which has come in. Thank you that there have been encouraging signs uh, through different tests, different trials, and that they're planning on bringing out these, this vaccination to help protect people. Lord, just pray for the rollout that uh, it will all go smoothly and that those who are most in need, those who are most vulnerable will get the protection they need. In other words, as we get this vaccine, we pray that there will be uh, peace as people wait for us to come out um, to them. We pray for the leaders of our country as they continue to make decisions on how to move forward um, with all these new, new uh, implementations, new tools which they have at their disposal. Lord, but it's good news. We thank you that we have a greater news to share. We thank you that we have how um, Christ came to die on the cross for us at uh, Christmas, that he came as a baby, a perfect life, and that he ultimately paid the price for us upon the cross. We pray that we will be able to use this Christmas season as an opportunity to share with those around us um, what he has done, what his great love is. Uh, we just pray for our church family. We pray for those who are unwell or isolating. And we pray that they will be able to uh, feel your hands of comfort upon them in these times. Uh, we just pray for the different teaching which is going on in the service. We pray for the words from junior church and for sermon. We pray that the, what is said in them will resonate with with each one of us, we'll be able to take something away from it all to um, grow closer to you or to come to know you, Lord. Yeah, we just pray all these things in your name. Amen.
Well, this has certainly been a year uh, like no other. None of us have, have uh, lived through anything like it. And the whole world has been affected in, in one way uh, or, or another, uh, with more than a million dead, lots of people very ill, uh, businesses affected, uh, destroyed even, travel uh, severely curtailed, holidays cancelled, schools closed. Uh, we could never have uh, imagined anything like this this time last year. And as we begin to approach Christmas, it's going to be very different to probably any Christmas that any of us have, have experienced or any of us can remember. Uh, it's been a year which changed the world in so many ways. Well, we want to look back uh, today more than 2,000 years to uh, another year which changed the world. It all began as a, a normal day for a young woman uh, in Nazareth, a bit of a small Galilean town, not a very desirable address, not like Hollywood at all, uh, a place where, where there were a lot of insurgents who would have been uh, keen to rebel against the Romans. And Mary was probably in her, her late teens or early 20s, and she was engaged to be married to Joseph, uh, the local joiner. Uh, and this is more than our, our engagement. It's, it's a formal legal arrangement called a betrothal. Uh, and Joseph was a good catch for Mary. Uh, he had a steady job. He was a local man. Uh, and not only that, but he was a direct descendant of, of King David, the great king of Israel. Well, Mary was probably busy working away with, with her, her wedding plans. A Jewish wedding would have been a very big affair and would have needed a lot of preparation. Then one day, out of the blue, an unexpected visitor turned up at her home. And I want to read from uh, Luke's Gospel. I'm reading from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Well, we don't know what uh, Gabriel looked like. Angels often looked like ordinary men, and they were mistaken uh, for ordinary men at times. Uh, he probably wasn't glowing white with wings or, 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 and carrying a harp. But if Mary wasn't started by his appearance, she was certainly startled by his unusual greeting, a very uh, atypical greeting for, for a woman. Uh, from a strange man there in, in the east. And so she was greatly troubled. She was really perplexed. She was frightened. She was disturbed. Well, Gabriel was used to frightening people. That was just, that just went with the job. Six months earlier, he was sent to a man uh, called Zachariah, the husband of, of Elizabeth, who was a relative of Mary. And Zachariah was a priest, uh, and he was serving in the temple when Gabriel appeared to him. And just like Mary, Luke tells us that he was startled and gripped with fear when Gabriel appeared to him. And Gabriel brought Zachariah news that his wife Elizabeth, who had been childless, they'd been unable to have a family, she would conceive uh, and have a son, and the son would be called John. And we now know him as John the Baptist. He was, he was the very first Baptist, uh, and he would be the one who would bring uh, the people preparation for Jesus, who would prepare the way for Jesus to come. And so in, in the reading that we've just looked at, when it says in the sixth month, that referred to the sixth month of uh, Elizabeth's pregnancy uh, that had been foretold also by, by Gabriel. And so Gabriel tried to, to calm Mary down just as he had Zachariah and he used exactly the same words. He said, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Uh, and then he brought her an extraordinary message. I want to read on from Luke's gospel beginning again at verse 30. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will, be with son and give, you will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And so here's this extraordinary message which comes to this uh, young girl just on an ordinary day there uh, in Nazareth. And we're so familiar with these events, we, we, can, we can lose sight of what was said. Uh, God was preparing to send his son, the long-promised, the long-awaited Messiah. And, and we're familiar with these events. We, we read them year after year. We know of Jesus' life and his ministry. We know of his death and resurrection. We know how the, the prophets of, in the Old Testament foretold his coming. Uh, and Mary would have been familiar with those prophecies, of course. She would have known the words of Isaiah, where he said, the virgin will be with child and give birth to his son, 
and we'll call him Emmanuel. Uh, and that where, where he went on, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom uh, from that time on and forever. She would have known those words, but she would never ever have anticipated being involved in any way uh, in their fulfillment. Well, Mary straight away saw a flaw in Gabriel's message and, and she said, well, I've never slept with a man. How can I, how can I possibly become pregnant? Well, Gabriel was also used to being doubted. Uh, Zachariah also doubted him when he brought the message to him. Uh, so he explains to Mary. I'm reading again now from verse 34. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. And so Gabriel explains that this would be a miraculous conception uh, by, by the Holy Spirit of God, an event uh, unique in the whole of, of human history. And she tells Mary that uh, her relative Elizabeth, who was unable to have children, has been miraculously able, unable to conceive and that she's now in her sixth month of, of her pregnancy. And so the angel says, Gabriel says, for nothing is impossible with God. Very short message, a very, very important message. Nothing is impossible with God. See, Mary probably wasn't even aware of Elizabeth's pregnancy. There wasn't Facebook or any of the media were used to news travel slowly. She probably wouldn't have been aware uh, that Elizabeth was expecting a baby. And so her response is quite remarkable. Uh, and again, we, we take this so much for granted. This is verse 38 of Luke chapter 1. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. And Luke just says, just like that, Gabriel just, just left as quickly as he'd arrived. I wonder, did Mary, after that, did Mary pinch herself? Did, did she wonder, had she dreamt it all? Had it been some sort of hallucination? Had she imagined the whole episode? Apparently, uh, during the, the time of the coronavirus, particularly during lockdown, people are having very vivid dreams. They're dreaming more frequently and, and dreaming more vividly. Uh, and I wonder if that, how Mary felt. Did she think, have I, have, I just, have I just imagined all of this? Did she begin to doubt herself, I wonder? Well, she decided that she would go to visit Elizabeth to see whether what the angel said was true, and that would give her some uh, reassurance. And, and so that's what she did. She traveled up immediately to visit Elizabeth, and she found that Elizabeth was indeed expecting a baby, just as the angel ha had told her. Uh, and Elizabeth, when Mary comes to her, Elizabeth greets her and confirms what uh, the angel had said, what Gabriel had said. Here's what Elizabeth said. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary then realizes that she didn't imagine the visit of the angel and that Gabriel's words were completely true. And so she, she sings a song of praise uh, to God, reading down from, from verse 46. She sings, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Well, Mary stayed for three months with Elizabeth until just before John was born. And then she returned home back to Nazareth, by now three months pregnant herself. And then came the next problem. How was she going to explain all of this to Joseph? Well, that's for next week. Uh, we'll find out a bit more about that then. But what, what can we learn from these events? Familiar events that happened all those years ago. Well, for Mary, that was certainly a year like, like no other. And not, not just for Mary, but for the whole of the world. God's plan of salvation had begun to unfold. Mary's baby was to be called Jesus. And that's just the Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua, which simply means the Lord saves. And this was the beginning of God's plan of salvation, beginning <clears throat> to unfold in, in time. 
and the word would never be the same again. As John in his gospel says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. God, through his son, was coming to dwell amongst men <clears throat> and women. Our world in, in 2020 has changed almost beyond recognition in, in so many ways. Well, maybe 2020 can be a, a, a year in which your life changes as an individual, just as Mary's life changed as an individual. Could this be the year when you recognize what Christmas is really about? Many of our normal Christmas activities are going to be curtailed this year, and many of the things that we associate with Christmas. But maybe that gives us a chance to understand or, or to think about the, the real meaning of Christmas, to think about what, what, what is behind all these celebrations that we just go through year after year. See, Jesus came first to his own people, the, the Jews, and just like today, many, many rejected him. Many had no time for him. Here's what John says uh, in his gospel. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Many uh, didn't recognize Jesus, didn't recognize him for who he was, and that's true today. Many people uh, are happy to celebrate Christmas, but don't give uh, much of a thought to the one uh, about whom the whole celebration is. Maybe this will be the, day, the year when you can uh, put your trust in Jesus. You can come to realize who Jesus was and why he came and to accept the salvation that he offers. That would certainly make 2020 a, a very special year for you, a year different to any other. In Edinburgh, in, in the gardens beside uh, Princess Street, there's a monument to Sir James Young Simpson. Uh, he was a physician and a scientist. I'm always interested in, in his story. Uh, he discovered many, uh, many chemicals and many compounds, probably the, the most famous of which was chloroform, which led to the whole development of modern anaesthetics and, and allowed us to have pain-free surgery. And late in his life, not long before his death, he was interviewed uh, for a newspaper article, and he was asked, what was your greatest discovery? And to the surprise of the journalist, he said, in December 1861, I discovered that I was a sinner and that Jesus Christ was my saviour. Maybe that could be true uh, for someone listening today in 2020, that you'll discover uh, that Jesus can be your saviour. And maybe you're already a follower of Jesus, uh, and perhaps you have your future all planned out, uh, job, career, family, house, uh, everything is already planned. What if God was calling you uh, to something else completely different? What if God had different plans for you, just the way he had different plans for Mary? What if he called you to change direction uh, to serve him? See, God can use very ordinary people to do great things for him. Mary is world famous now. Uh, everyone in, in the world knows about her and there's music written about her. But at that time, she was just an ordinary, a simple a woman living uh, an ordinary life there in Nazareth. And she was initially hesitant and fearful when Gabriel spoke to her. But God was patient, and God confirmed his, his plans to her. Hudson Taylor, who for 51 years was a missionary in China, said, all God's giants have been weak people, hesitant and fearful and uncertain, just as Mary was. I wonder if God calls you to something different. God calls you to, to reevaluate your life. I wonder, would, would you be like Mary and say, I am the Lord's servant. I, I will do whatever it is that, that you want me to do. Well, this has been certainly a year like no other. Uh, many have experienced struggles and disappointments, uh, anxieties, uh, and we can bring those to God. We can bring those to God as we, uh, as we begin to think about uh, Christmas and the events surrounding it, because we know that God understands. God understands our weaknesses uh, and all that we go through. Whatever situation we may face, difficulty in our health or in our work or in our family, with friends, with relatives, whatever it may be, hopeless things at a human level, things that we just don't know how to deal with or resolve, whatever we may be facing, we need to remember those words of Gabriel to Mary. Nothing is impossible with God. 
All those years ago, God broke into the world in, in an exceptional way, a unique way. There has never been a year like it. And for many of us, there's never been a year like 2020. But perhaps this is a year in which we can recognize uh, God's call on our lives, can commit our lives to him for the first time, or recommit our lives to him and offer ourselves to his service, just as Mary did and to bring our anxieties and our worries and our concerns to him as we live through these strange days, because we know that nothing is impossible to God. Now let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do praise you that you stepped into our dark, sinful world in the form of your Son. Thank you that through him you offer salvation to all who will accept him. And we pray that in the midst of all the difficulties through which we're going, that, that you, you'll help us to put our trust in that one, born as a baby in Bethlehem, but now reigning forever. Please make us like Mary, willing to be your servants, that, that through us others may come to know the salvation and the peace which Jesus came to bring. We ask it in his name and for your glory. Amen.
chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say. Thanks for watching. Let me pray now as we conclude our morning together. Father, thank you for all that we've seen, all that we've heard. We pray that you would continue to work in our hearts. Lord, we pray that you would continue to be our peace now for the rest of today, and the rest of the week, and until we meet again. So we, we commit ourselves to you now in Jesus' name. Amen.